What is up everybody, Dak here, and today I'm back with a rant video. Now this is something that has bothered me for a while and I thought I'd like to just talk about it, but also I've got an open mind so if anyone can explain why, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments, but I really don't like modern home theatre subwoofers. For instance, this one here. Now this is actually from 2011, but the trend hasn't changed. Uh, all of them, pretty well all of them, are small ported units or small passive radiator units, about 20 litres in volume, and tuned very high. Um, now, as you know, ported speakers, including passive radiator speakers, when they play below, below their tuning, they've got a very sharp roll off of out of the peak curve that they have, which can have a quite a steep roll off, they've usually got a 24 dB prop depth roll off, which means every, and if you imagine every 3 dB is a doubling in power, 24 dB is six times halving, or sorry, eight times halving the power. So when for a 40 hertz tuned speaker at 20 hertz, its output is significantly reduced. Uh, what I consider the ideal home theatre subwoofer to be is, and its footprint isn't that dissimilar. Here we have a 6 inch, or sorry a 7 inch because they had to be a bit different, a 7 inch driver in a roundabout maybe a 20 litre enclosure. Now right here I've got a 12 inch car subwoofer in a 1 cubic foot enclosure. And I'm going to go through why I reckon this is a better subwoofer, although it's only slightly bigger. So first off, I want to do a quick impedance curve for this driver right here. Now I've got the handy Dayton DATS V3, and what I can do with this is I can run a quick impedance sweep and the tuning frequency the tuning frequency of this driver will be represented as a dip in the impedance when there's a greater load on the driver. Alright, so I've just done a sweep and I can see that its tuning frequency is around 65 hertz. So what does that mean? As I said before, a 40 hertz tuned subwoofer at 20 hertz has a significantly reduced output. A 65 hertz subwoofer has virtually zero output at 20 hertz. It's got nothing down there, no matter how hard it tries. Uh, this sub would have to be jumping out of its basket in order to try to reproduce 20 hertz at any level whatsoever. And it's very stiff, this driver, so that'd require a lot of power. It'd just be incredibly inefficient. So now I'm going to run an impedance sweep of this one. All right, I'm not sure if the microphone will pick it up. I'll do a comparison. But this one audibly has more down low in the impedance sweep. Now it has a 60 hertz tuning, which means it's 12 dB Proctor roll off starts lower. So already it's flogging this one for low end reproduction. And just so you can hear the difference. Now, to my ears, I can hear this has a bit of a woof to it when it reaches the port tuning. It's overdamped and it just sounds like crap. It's got nothing below the port tuning, it's nothing, and then it's got the woof and then it goes and it goes way up high. This driver is virtually a mid range driver in a ported box. It's, um, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. And I know that this is just an El Cheapo LG unit, but it's the same for all of them. Samsung, uh, Sony, they've all got these, um, name any brand virtually, unless it's a proper hi fi brand or proper home theatre brand, such as, um, well, SVS is a popular one. But you can see that um, this one, is just simply inferior to this one even though it's a ported box because it's got a small driver in a ported box it's it's such a small driver it loses it even though it's ported it loses out to efficiency to this driver here and this one isn't even optimized 
this is an old driver, it's got a loose suspension, it's fast as increased, it's really not optimal for this box. Uh, it ends up having a QTS of, or sorry, a QTC of 1.1, which uh, is very high, considering 0.7 is considered ideal. And this unideal speaker is better than the engineered LG subwoofer. No idea why. Now, if we were going to talk about efficiency, as I said, this one is more efficient than this one, just to the ear. Unless it's at 60 hertz. This one's probably more efficient at 60 hertz, but you're trying to get a wide band out of it, or a wider band than just one frequency. Uh, I imagine these type of speakers are the reason why people often say ported boxes um, just produce one note, because this speaker just produces that 66 hertz, whereas this one covers the full range. I've heard plenty of ported boxes that can cover a full range. The six order bandpass, which is a very ported enclosure in my car, goes from 16 hertz to 60 hertz dead flat all the way up, that's two octaves. But another thing that may be considered is power handling. A ported box such as this at its tuning frequency can have a decent power handling seeing as the port is taking the load away from the cone movement of the driver. Now, I once again don't think that's a very good excuse for a ported enclosure as this one right here, it's in a sealed box. Sealed boxes resist movement at low frequencies, so the driver doesn't tend to move too far and damage itself, so excursion shouldn't be an issue. Uh, this one I can give 200 watts fairly well uh, without it reaching too much excursion, so driver size doesn't matter too much. Now something else I, I thought of is possibly it is efficiency, maybe, this one does do a decent 60 hertz, um, but I don't think that's very accurate either, as modern class D amplifiers, um, as I mentioned in another video, uh, depending on which order I upload in, an amplifier this size, a modern full bridge class D amplifier this size can do 3000 watts at 90% efficiency. This size, now that's a car amplifier, a home amplifier would be a bit bigger as it needs the power supply, but an amplifier this size Class D full bridge has a power supply in it anyway. It's an inverter power supply which brings the 12 volts of the car up to maybe around 100 volts or 60 to 100 volts on the rail. So they've already got a power supply built into them. Uh, I just don't think there's really an excuse for this. Um, it's just never sounded that good. So if power handling was an issue, this driver can just still handle more power than this one. Even EQ, something that could be done is this unit could be given much more power, low frequencies and equalized as everything's class D these days. Everything's got a computer chip in it. So there's no excuse for a lack of digital signal processing to optimize the output. Whereas this one just simply will never do 20 hertz. It won't do 20 hertz ever. Unless you plug it, but then that's kind of reducing the point. Then you've just got a six inch sealed sub versus a 12 inch sealed sub. And of course the 12 inch is gonna win every time. 